Hello everyone, this is Ian Robinson with Creative 111, and this week I'm going to show you how to use Content Aware Fill to remove a person from a background. Let's go ahead and press the spacebar here to preview the video file that we're going to go ahead and remove the person from. And as you can see, not only is the camera moving, uh, but the person and the blanket they're wearing is also moving. So I'll go ahead and press the spacebar to stop playback. And rather than making you sit through six seconds of removal, we'll just do two seconds because the process is exactly the same. So I'll move my current time indicator to two seconds and press B to set the beginning of the work area. Then I'll move my current time indicator to four seconds of the timeline and press N is in Nancy to set the end of the work area. So this is the section where I want to remove the person. So I'll move my current time indicator to the beginning of the work area here, and I'll go up to my tool panel and grab the pen tool. Now, immediately I see the fill and the stroke, which means I don't have layer one selected. So I need to click on layer one to make sure it's selected. That way, when I use the pen tool, it's actually going to create a mask, which is what I want. So with layer one selected and the pen tool selected, I'll click to create some points around the outside of our person here, like so. And then I'll just click back at the starting point to close that path. Press V on your keyboard to select the selection tool, and that way you won't accidentally add any more masks. Now let's make sure this person never moves outside of the mask area by clicking on the current time indicator and scrubbing in the timeline. And you can see down here, just the edge of the blanket goes beyond that mask edge. So I'm gonna click right here in between these two points and I'll click and drag out to just move the mask to a little bit larger area. So notice, even though the camera's moving and the person is moving, the mask is not. And as long as that person stays inside the mask, it's totally fine. This area right here where the foot gets a little close to the edge, I'm gonna click on this edge and I'll bring that down just to make sure that we have plenty of space around our moving person. This looks pretty good. So now we need to specify the area that we'd like to remove and the area we'd like to keep. And the way to do that is to go to mask one here and change the mode from add to subtract because we wanna actually keep all this it's this area that we need to remove and replace with Content Aware Fill. So go up under the window menu and go to Content Aware Fill. And I'm just gonna click right on the words Content Aware Fill and I'll drag up to the right side of the composition panel and let go. And here you can see the fill method. We're gonna be filling an object, which is great. And the range is a work area, meaning we're only going to fill in the work area. Now, when I say generate fill layer, it's gonna take a little while to analyze what's going on. Once it finishes analyzing all those frames, then it'll go ahead and actually render the frames which are appearing here with layer one. And it's simply called fill, and then it'll be numbered the frames that it's actually replacing. So I'll rejoin you here in a hot second once the analysis and the rendering is finished. All right, once that's complete, I'll go ahead and just click down here in the bottom of the timeline to deselect. And you can see it's done a pretty amazing job actually removing that area. I can press the space bar to preview the animation and you can see immediately it looks pretty darn good. The only thing I wanna remove is this little bit of a hump here in the top of the hill. And so I'll scrub my current time indicator back to the beginning of the timeline because this is where I think the bump is at its largest point. And then I'll go over here in Content Aware Fill. And I know it looks like this button is grayed out, Create Reference Frame, but it's really not. Go ahead and click on that. And when I click on that, it's automatically going to go ahead and open up that frame here inside of Photoshop. Once inside of Photoshop, I'll press S to grab the stamp tool. Looking at its options, I'll click up here and make sure the size is somewhere around 46 pixels and the hardness I'll set down to zero. Then under the mode, I'll leave it set to normal with an opacity of 100 and a flow of 100 and aligned does not need to be selected. 
Now, let's sample from a different part of the hill. I'm going to hover my mouse over this part right here, and I'll hold down Alt on Windows or Option on the Mac, and I'll click once, and that's going to specify the frames I'd like to sample. Then when I come over here, notice I'm getting a preview as to what might get painted if I were to click and drag. So here, I want to go ahead and click and drag to the right to smooth this hill out. And I didn't quite remove it, so I'll come back over here, hold down Alter Option to sample a new section of the ground here, and I'll just paint like so right over top of that bump that used to be there. If I want to retouch it again, I can hold down Alter Option, specify the frames, come right over the area in question and just click and paint or click and drag to paint. And that actually added a little bit more of a bump. So I'm going to hold down Alter Option again and I'll just start painting a little bit lower in the scene and I'll drag out. There we go. That looks a little better. Hold down Alter Option can sample down here. Okay, there we go. Whoops, I've added a little bump back in there again. Alter option, and I'll just paint this out. Okay, almost have it. Alter option, and I'll just paint right here. There we go. All right, so if you want to see the difference, I can go right here to the history section or the history panel. And when I open it, you can see here's where the bump was. And I actually have this little dark area here. And then if I click at the bottom of it here, you can see what the finished result looks like. So I like the finished result. I'll go ahead and press Command S on the Mac or Control S on Windows to save. And I'll jump back into After Effects. I'll give it a second and you'll notice not much has changed. That's because the first fill layers are still on. So I'll turn the visibility of that off. And now you can see this is the new reference frame. I can turn that off and on and you can see where it's actually filling in the pixels. So if I were to move my current time indicator, you'd notice I still have a bunch of empty frames. So I need to generate the rest of the fill by going up here and saying generate fill layer. And you'll notice it'll slap a new fill on top, turning on its visibility, and it's gonna go through the same process it had done before, where it's gonna go ahead and analyze the content, and once it's finished, it'll go ahead and render those frames. So I'll rejoin you here in a hot second when that's finished. All right, now let's press the space bar here, and you can see it's not only filled in that area, but we have a much more consistent hillside, and this is exactly what I was envisioning when we retouch things. So when it comes to actually removing elements from a scene like this, an entire person using content-aware fill, sometimes if you're replacing a large enough area, it may not necessarily be completely precise but that's okay. That's when you can go ahead and create reference frames. Just make sure once you've created the reference frame and saved it in Photoshop, when you get back into After Effects, turn off the old fill, and then you can go ahead and generate a new fill layer, and it'll make sure to reference that one frame. I know a lot of people are wondering, well, will that work with multiple frames? Like, let's say if I come down here at three seconds, all of a sudden the hill started getting bumpy again. Sure enough, I could go ahead and start right at three seconds and say create reference frame. It's going to create another reference frame that I can take into Photoshop. I can retouch and have it look great. And then I'll turn off the old fill again and generate another fill layer. And it'll not only consider the original reference frame, but it'll also consider the new one I've created. So you can get as detailed as you like by creating multiple reference frames just make sure you take the time and retouch things to look exactly the way you want. So once again, this has been Ian Robinson with Creative 111. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next week.